Hi everyone, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and today in this particular video, we will be covering the most frequently asked interview questions related to SAP MM. Okay, so guys, in this particular video, we will be covering a few questions, and those questions are divided into two categories. The first set of questions is for the freshers, and the second set of questions is for the experienced candidates, like those candidates who have at least two to three years of experience with SAP MM. Okay. So without any further delay, let's get started with our first question. So the question over here is, what is the difference between CBP and MRP? Okay, so guys, in the actual interview as well, whenever you're asked such kind of questions like difference between so and so, so what you can do is, you can grab a piece of paper and on, on that paper, you can make two columns, one for CBP and the second one for MRP, and then you can write the differentiating points in those columns. Okay, so in this particular questions, we have to highlight the differences between CBP and MRP. Okay, so in case of CBP, when the materials are planned using CBP, the prediction for the required materials is done by the past demand of the same materials. Whereas in case of MRP, when the materials are planned through MRP, the prediction for the required materials is done by the SOP, which is sales and operation planning. So this is one such crucial differentiation between CBP and MRP. Now, the second point is, in case of CBP, forecasting, planning, which is time-faced, and reorders point are used. So in case of MRP, since this is used for the planning of the future, everything depends on the size of the lot that was previously given or ordered. Okay, so guys, these were some critical differences between CBP and MRP. So guys, the next question is, what do you know about SAP MM? So in this particular question, you have to mention the definition of SAP MM. So SAP has a functional module which is known as SAP MM or SAP Materials Management. So it looks after the management of the materials and obtaining and handling. The module consists of the master data and the configuration of the system and the transactions to complete the procurement to pay process. The next question is, can you elaborate on SAP and how it is useful in industries? So SAP basically stands for Systems, Applications and Processing the Data. So it is the most popular software application that is used to provide enterprise business solutions. So this ERP software application was first introduced in Germany in the year 1972. So guys, ERP basically stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. So it provides a solution by incorporating various business tasks like sales, purchase, and production. SAP obtains details from one business process and integrates them into another business process. And this speeds up the business process. So it is broadly used in industries since it updates and processes important data very quickly. And it is used by the department to determine how to prepare the products. And also it can program business processes and provide real-time solutions for the businesses. The next question is, can you explain the essential components in SAP MM? So to define the requirements, determination sources, selection of vendors, order processing, follow up with the clients, receipts of goods and inventory management, verification of bills, payment systems, and so on. The next question is, do you know about the organizational structure in the MM module? So the structure in the MM module is a ladder in which various organizational units are arranged, designed according to the functions and tasks of each of them. The units that make the structure of the organization are as follows. So the first one is the client and this unit is independent. So this unit has a different record system as well as its own table sets. The second component is the company code. So this is one of the smaller units of the organization. So for the need for external reports, one can make a self-reliant account set for the unit of company code. The third one is the plan. So this is where the supplies are formed and the services and goods are given. The industry can be broken down into different plans based on maintenance, supplies, production, procurement, etc. So the next is the location of the storage. The produced goods are kept in this unit. The next is the number of warehouse and this shows the system of the warehouse. It is different for every area of storage and organization. After that is the storage type, which tells the different areas such as issuing, 
area, area for picking up of the goods, and so on. The next is the organization of the purchasing, which is the unit that negotiates with others for purchasing and also obtains the services and the material. The next is group purchasing, which is a code for an individual buyer or a group who actually purchases the materials. So this unit also partially involves in negotiating and obtaining the goods. The next question is explain in detail the order of the purchase. So this is a final and formal confirmation of the essential materials to be supplied by the vendor to the industry. So this will involve all of the names of the essential materials with the equivalent plant. So the details of the purchase would include the code of the company, the vendor's name, the delivery date of the materials and so on. The next question is, why is the record of the information of purchase useful? So it is essential because it collects various information on the vendor and the materials supplied to them. For instance, the current price at which the vendor is selling the material is recorded in the purchase record. The next question is, what are the important criteria in purchasing? So the important criteria in purchasing include the unit of the order, the group of material, the base unit, the group of purchasing, the validity, the indicator of tax for that material, the part number of the manufacturer and the manufacturer itself. The next question is elaborate on the receipt of the goods in the SAP system. So once the purchase is processed by the vendor, the material and goods are delivered to the party that ordered it and this process is known as the receipt of the goods. So during this time, when the material is delivered, the party that acquires checks for the quality and the condition of the materials and goods. After the verification, the receipt is finally posted. The next question is, what is the code used for the extension of the view of material? So the code that is used for the transaction of the material view is MM50. The next question is, what is the code for deleting a particular batch? So the code for deleting a batch is MSC2N. Alternatively, if one flags the batch of the master record, then the batch record can be deleted completely. The next question is, how is a receipt posted? The goods receipt can be posted by going to the options of the logistics and then to the materials management and then the inventory management. After this, you can choose the goods movement and then choose the T code, which is MIGO. The next question is, what do you mean by source list and what is the code of the source list? The source list is to identify the home of the supply from where the materials come. So the code for creating the source list is ME01. The next question is, what is the essential for creating a record of purchase information? So there are a few points which are important for creating a record of purchase information, such as the number of the material, the part number of the manufacturer, the number of the vendor, the level code of the organization, and so on. So guys, with this, we have covered the freshest category of questions for SAP MM. And now question number 15 onwards, we will be covering questions which are meant for the experienced candidates. So the next question over here is, what is the planned delivery and GR processing time? So the meaning of planned delivery is the number of business days in which the person is expected to receive the materials and the goods. The GR processing time is the number of business days in which the person has to inspect and place the material in the storage after obtaining the goods and the materials. The next question is, what is the material requirement planning and mention the code to access this list. So material requirement planning is the first working manuscript from where the controller of the MRP starts the work and it includes the planning of the information of the goods and materials. So for accessing a single item, one can use the code MD05. The next question is, what is known as RFQ? So RFQ is the abbreviation for request for quotation. So it is basically a kind of form that is given to the vendors for them to submit any quotation, which is indicative of the terms and conditions and the price of the goods and materials. So it has the details about quantity of goods, information about the goods, the delivery date of when the form is to be submitted. The next question is explain what is the reservation. So reservation is the blocking of the stock beforehand so that its availability is ensured later in time. So it ensures that the stock is made available and can be used as per the requirements. The next question is what is the code used for reservation? 
So the transaction code which is used for reservation is MB21. So guys, based on this question in the actual interview, you can also be asked like what is the T code for a stock overview? So the experienced candidates will be easily able to answer this question. So the T code for a stock overview is MMBE. The next question is what is CBP? Okay, so CBP basically means the consumption value of the materials in the past. So it is used to know about the requirements in the future. So based on the consumption of the services in the past, the average requirement of the goods can be calculated. The next question is, what is the type for the reversal of the issue of the goods? So the transactional type for the reversal of the issue of the goods is the number 262. The next question is, how is quota rating checked? So the formula for checking the quota rating is the addition of the base quantity of the quota and the allocated quantity quota and divide it by the overall quota. The next question is mention the last stage in the cycle of procurement. So the last stage of the procurement cycle is the verification of the invoice. So this also updates the documents which are related to the accounts and finances. So there is a difference between real invoice and the block one. So the real invoice can be handled by verification of the invoice. The next question is mention for the stock transport order some movement types. So some of the movement types are 351, 641, 643 for the stock order. Another one is 301 which can be used as an easy way for transferring the materials. The next question is what is the point of difference between purchase order and purchase requisition. So purchase requisition is set to an internal sheet and it is an appeal that is done to the organization which is going to purchase the services and send the list of the goods. If you talk about purchase order, so it is the formal sheet that is sent to the vendor which has the list of the essential items that need to be taken from the vendor. The next question is how does one do a verification of the invoice? So when the invoice is related to an existing sheet, then every information which is relevant is taken out by the system. So this includes material, vendor, delivery, and its terms, payments, and so on. So one has to enter the invoice and the system takes out the account, tax, discount, and the corrections that are relevant. So if the invoice has been posted, data like the average of the price, these are recognized. The next question is, how are parked documents shown? So parked documents are shown with the codes FBV3 and FB03. So FBV3 displays the park sheets, whereas FB03 shows all of the posted sheets. So it is useful to use the FBV3 if one needs to know if any documents still need approval or if they still need completion. The next question is explain different types of ERPs. So the different types of ERPs are SAP, Microsoft Dynamics, PeopleSoft, Oracle, Siebel, BAN, and so on. So these are some of the different types of ERP softwares, or you can say that these are some of the competitors to SAP. The next question is, what is a NetWeaver? So NetWeaver is an incorporated technology in which every product in the MySAP group can be used in a single go of a server which is known as SAP Web Application Server. So this technology is very useful and helps the user efficiently. One of the crucial advantages of using this is that data related to SAP can be accessed by the enterprises through even mobile devices. So this is not only cost effective, but also time effective. So if one uses this, a lot of money is saved, which could otherwise go into training a new user in the SAP client. The next question is explain metadata, transaction data and master data and can SAP be called a type of database. So if you talk about metadata, so metadata basically informs a person about the information of a data. So this gives a person in depth information about the hierarchy of the information or it is also called meta objects. So there are many types of metadata. Some of the metadata are structural metadata, descriptive metadata, reference metadata, statistical metadata, and administrative metadata. So each of these types has a different kind of function in a system. If you talk about transaction data, so this is nothing but the information pertaining to the transactions which happen on the day-to-day -day basis. 
So after that comes the master data. So master data provides essential information about the materials, the employees, and even the information related to the customer of that service. So you can also call master data as the data of reference. For example, the person orders a product which is 20 units. So instead of asking the customer's address 20 times, the same information can be used from the master data of the customer. So now coming to the last question. So can SAP be called a type of database? So SAP cannot be called a database. Since it is an application, it uses the databases which are provided by other retailers. So these retailers include Oracle Server, SQL Server and so on. So guys, with this, we have come to the end of this session on SAP MM interview questions. I hope you guys have enjoyed this session. If at all you have any queries related to this session, then you can write them in the comment section and my team is here to resolve all your doubts and queries. So guys, I wish you all the very best for your upcoming interview and thank you so much for being with us.